what I put together here was some basics and then mixed in with just some stats from this year. Kind of point out how important crop insurance, especially in a year like this. Uh, you're going to see area wide how that how important that was and and uh, like I said, I, I went ahead and put some uh, just kind of the basics uh, of what everything is. There's been some changes recently when it comes to crop insurance. Um, we've changed our acronyms. We don't have CRC anymore. We have RP and we don't have APH. It's YP and so I just kind of go over some of those things, and, and y'all may have already seen this before, but uh, just kind of go over it. You know, you got your federal crop insurance, which is the common crop policy, which is the RP and YP, which is what used to be CRC and APH. And then, of course, you have group uh, plans, CAT, and NAP for the non-insured, and PRF uh, for pastures that you can buy. Um, you can buy NAP and PRF on the same acres, actually, if you, if you wanted to. And then, of course, we got private crop hail, and then something kind of new on the scene is private weather insurance. And I've just got a little bit on that to kind of show you. And then on the livestock side, we got two different uh, products there. LGM, which is livestock gross margin. That's available for, for cattle, uh, either beef cattle or dairy cattle, and also for swine in this area. And then LRP, uh, which is really kind of like buying a foot on animals only. You don't have to do it in contract size. You can do it for the number of animals you have, and you can get that on feeder cattle, fed cattle, uh, sheep, and swine. So that's kind of our basic options that I'm going to go through. Of course, the crop, common crop policy um, combines the old APH, CRC, RA, IP, and IIP into one policy structure. So kind of how that works. CRC became revenue protection. RA without uh, uh, harvest price option, the IP and the IIP became revenue protection with the harvest price exclusion, and then APH became the YP, the yield protection. And so revenue provides protection against loss of price, uh, uh, price declines or increases, or uh, also production losses. If it's with a harvest price exclusion, it protects you against just a price decline. And, and the reason that the price increase is something you're protecting against is if you're out there, and it's not real common in cotton, but it is in corn, and, and you got a production contract and you're, you're committing to so many bushels, well, you're also at risk if the price goes up on you because you've got a cash forward contract for a price. And I've been trying to explain that to my cotton producers who were really afraid of doing a production contract on cotton. And so, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna sign a bales contract on cotton, you really need to buy the revenue protection with the harvest price option on there because that's what protects you if you don't produce a crop and the price goes up. So, uh, much more common in, in corn to have a, a production contract. A lot of cotton still on acre contract. And of course, yield protection, the APH, that's just going to protect you strictly against the production loss at whatever the price was in the spring. One of the things they changed when they went to the new policies is on price determination. All of them now use the same uh, commodity exchange and time period to, to set the price. Used to be APH was, was just kind of set in a black box. And the CRC was set during the time on the on the exchange, either the CME um, for livestock or or uh, Chicago Board of Trade for corn and soybeans and New York Exchange for cotton. Um, all use the same same period now, same uh, price. Harvest price determined at the end of the year will be used to uh, calculate production to count on the on the revenue plan. Those periods then, um, cotton uses the ICE December contract. The uh, spring price is set in the month of February for all the northern counties up here. Uh, the mid counties, it's set from January 15th to uh, February 14th. And in South Texas, it's set from December 15th to January 14th. Harvest price is the month of October in both the middle and northern counties. 
and the month of September for those southern counties. And corn uses the Chicago Board of Trade in the December contract. Uh, the northern counties, it's the month of February. The southern counties, it's the month of January. Uh, both of those set their harvest price in the month of September. Grain sorghum uses the December corn on the Chicago Board of Trade. Northern counties is the month of February. Southern counties is the month of January. Harvest price for both is the month of September. And then wheat uses the July Kansas City Board of Trade contract. The projected price is set from August 15th to September 14th. And the harvest price is set in the month of June. So, what are we buying? When it comes to cotton, the primary product is the RP product. Uh, Two-thirds of all policies sold in Texas were RP. Um, the next is the YP, the yield production, yield APH. That's 28.5%, and the other 4% in CAT, and then less than 1% each for the other types of, of, of products. This map here, uh, these are available from the... Uh, uh, regional Office of Risk Management Agency with USDA, Oklahoma City, but the, um, you can see just our planting dates here in Castro County. We're in the uh, uh, May 31st is the final planting date for cotton. Then we go to corn. Look at the corn. RP accounts for 45% and YP 44%. So it's pretty evenly split between the two. And there's a little bit more cat on corn at 10%. Um, I know with people I do pharmacists with, there's quite a few people that just get cat or a real low level of YP and then add hail on top of that to cover the rest of theirs. So that's, that's why you see those numbers like they are. And of course, planting dates in here, um, May 15th. And then grain sorghum. It's about the same as corn, 45% is RP, 46.7% is YP, and 7.5% CAT. As you can see, most of these other policies aren't, aren't real popular. It's less than 1% in each of the other types of policies. <coughs> Grain sorghum planting date um, is that red. It goes all the way up into Oklahoma, and that's June 30th. And then on wheat, um, wheat's a little bit more like cotton. 60.9% is the RP, 26.3% uh, is YP, and 11.8% CAT. So there's just a little bit more CAT on wheat. Final planting date there is uh, November 15th, so just past that. Okay, so indemnities this year, as of uh, uh, October 24th, they only update this map about once a month, I think. You can see, of course, Texas is just covered up in indemnities. The, the dark maroon is over $10 million per county, which most of all of our counties in this part, and I'm, I'll show you the numbers specifically, but uh, are over $10 million. Uh, this up here in, the, in North Dakota was flooding uh, in the spring. Most of that was prevented planting because they couldn't get in. So basically, it's, it's kind of an interesting year that... The key, th this was drought all the way up into Kansas, and this was all prevented planting for flood. So it was either too wet or too dry every, in, in the big areas that had payoff. And of course, there's the drought map, so you can see, just to remind you just how dry it was, still is. On the recent crop report, there was only one district in the state, reporting district, that had um, more than 10% uh, of their average rainfall in the last three months. Everybody else had it had less than 10% of normal. In Central Texas, it had 11% of their normal average. So our drought losses. There was a, a study that came out not too long ago said that we had. Uh, 5.4 billion in drought losses. I took out the livestock part of that and just looked at the crop losses, which is three point, about 3.2 billion. Indemnities that were paid, 
so far this year was 1.7 billion. We break that down. Cotton had uh, 1.8 billion worth of loss and 1.13 worth of indemnity. So uh, 60 something percent was, uh, I think it's about 65 percent of that loss was covered through crop insurance. As we kind of move down, corn, you know, it was only about 45%. Grain sorghum was only, uh, was about 60%. The wheat uh, was a little bit more, it was like, I think, 54%. Pasture and rangeland, pasture, rangeland, forage, pretty big gap there, 123 versus $750 million worth of losses. Part of that's just because people don't buy that much insurance on, on pasture and rangeland. And the fact that this is just, the PRF indemnities, people can also buy NAP. And some, some uh, ranchers I dealt with uh, only had NAP, and didn't have PRF. So that doesn't include the NAP payments there because those are administered out of the different programs. <laughs> as far as indemnities in this area, Castro County had $16 million worth paid out, uh, Parmer 24, Million Bailey 17, Lamb 40 million, Hale 46, Jeff Smith 26. So big payouts around here 60 million in Lubbock. If we look at the top 10 Texas counties, Lynn County had the most at 76 million, and Dawson at 67, and then Lubbock, Hockley, Fisher, uh, all top 10 were over 40 million dollars paid out in each of those counties. Of course, Lynn County is big dry land county. Uh, as far as acres go on cotton. Uh, Martin County is almost all dry land. Floyd, Floyd County, um, a lot of dry land there, but they had a lot of corn loss there because they just didn't have the water. And so that's where some of that big numbers came in there. Um, Lubbock County, most, most of Lubbock County wound up being dry land by the time it was all over. A lot of the irrigated there was, was abandoned too. Okay, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time talking about crop hail, but uh, just to kind of let you know, crop hail you know, is not part of the federal crop insurance system. Uh, it's provided directly uh, by private insurers. Um, you know, they, they do work uh, with some standards there, but uh, you can purchase the MPCI. There's not like a sales closing date or anything. You know, you do have to buy your hail insurance before it's actually hailing there. That's, there's, there's a little bit of time there you got to buy it. And as far as that private weather insurance I mentioned, there's a place called the, the Climate Corporation. It used to be called Weather Bill. And as far as cotton production goes, um, it, you, you still buy this product just like um, it was originally being sold, which is by specific weather event. In other words, um, you can buy insurance against it raining during harvest. So you can say, here's harvest, and if it rains during harvest, then I get a check. What they've, what they've since come up with is this thing called this total weather insurance, and they've got it right now for corn, soybeans, and they're supposed to, I think next year, have it available for cotton, but they don't have the specifics up there yet. Um, and on what it does is it takes all the different events, all the different key time periods, and puts them into one weather package so that you can just buy total weather insurance. So in other words, that, that it's, if it's going to be too dry during pollination and corn, and it rains during harvest or planting, and that those all get packaged together into one, one deal. And with, with corn, I think they have seven weather events at seven key times. And if any of those happen, it doesn't matter if it even affected you, but if they happen according to the grid that you're in, you get a check. So it's kind of a, you know, it can be a, a, a package deal here. Yeah. Right quicker, the grids, are they like a 12 by 12 mile grid, the same as like the PRF? Do you know? They are not the same as PRF. I, I do know that. What, what they're using is their own proprietary smoothing software where they take all the different weather stations and they pinpoint it down to pretty okay. close to your farm. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, 
you know, that that's part of their deal. It's kind of like DTN's new weather thing that they're coming out with that's supposed to get it really close to being accurate for your farm. Well, they're doing the same thing here. And so it, it's pretty much, if, if, it, if it was going to rain on your farm, it's your farm. It's not those 12 by 12 grids like the URL. And th this is just a little deal I pulled up. Lubbock County, they, they claim that more than 99% of losses for cotton in Lubbock County are due to weather. So I guess I'd agree with that. That's pretty much what, what takes care of cotton there. I did try to put cotton into their system right now, and it won't let me put in a yield more than 300 because it's got their little deal has got it limited for corn because they only let you put no more than 300 bushels expected for corn. And so they, they don't have all the kinks worked out on cotton yet. Just a little bit then on pasture. Uh, I mentioned it before, but you know, the two things you can do on pasture, rangeland, and, and forage is, is PRF and NAP. And it's one of the few things that you can actually buy both on the same acre. Um, of course, you know, NAP's going to cost you 250 bucks. It's just an administrative fee. Uh, PRF uh, actually is a rated product of which is hev heavily subsidized. And the reason it's heavily subsidized is it's, it's kind of the, the federal government's way of, of providing some safety net to, to livestock. They got all these crop programs. They didn't have anything for livestock. So they went in here and they subsidized the premium real heavy on PRF. Uh, so much so that, you know, in a 10-year period, you're, you're almost guaranteed to get more money than you put in. And the reason you're getting that, it's actuarially sound overall, but the government's subsidizing the premium so much that it makes it where it pretty much just pays. Of course, in, in the record drought, it paid off. It's paying off really good this year. Of course, the period's not over yet. Where it's available, it's it's available all over the West. But the green states here are the vegetative index, and the blue is the rainfall index. And you should be thankful that you live in Texas and you have rainfall index instead of vegetative, because New Mexico, New Mexico, as you can see, was under just about as much drought as we were. This up here around Farmington is about the only place that wasn't in drought. Um, I don't know, I guess maybe the Navajos live right, because that's where Nappy is, and that's the Navajo Farming Project. And that's about the only farming there is up there. But when you compare what happened in New Mexico with the vegetative index, the, the loss of, that, that was, uh, the amount of premium that was sold there, um, the uh, the loss ratio was 0.8 in New Mexico, even though they had this kind of a drought. In Texas, the loss ratio was 1.8. In other words, they paid out twice as much as the premiums that were paid in. In New Mexico, it didn't even pay back the premium. And yet both places had the same amount of drought. Um, I talked to some guys that were selling PRF in both states, and they said they had no claims in New Mexico that they had. So that vegetative index is not figured right. You can have one of the worst droughts ever and, and not have it pay at all. Dates on that. Of course, we're already past the sales closing date this year. So, I mean, if you're thinking about this, it, it'd be for next year. Because it's September 30th. Acreage reporting on November 15th. And the crop year is from January to December. The grids, like he mentioned, the, you got 12 by 12 grids. And there are basically four grids in Castro County. Nazareth is in this one. Then it's over here. Hart's in one. And then this where I got three marks over here. So I looked at um, I looked at grids uh, 17 to 12, which is the one that has Dimmit in it. Just looked at a, uh, a section of land and divided that out into four grazing periods and covered uh, through August. And the premium paid in on this was $832, and it would have paid back $4,000 already this year. So about five times what the premium was is what, what that paid, uh, just through the first part of the year. So we don't have data for the rest of the year. Uh, this, this deal, when you look at it long term, and I I, didn't, I got a whole presentation just on PRF, but when you look at it long term, you know, it, it pays off about at least the premium 
something like seven out of ten years. So it's really really not a bad deal to look at. Um, then gross margin, um, it's it's available for dairy. Basically, what that's calculated as, it's uh, futures price of corn, soybean meal, uh, minus milk, and they got a formula. Uh, on the cattle, it's just going to be the cost of um, uh, feeder cattle and corn, and and then the uh, fat cattle on the other side. The same with swine, it, it's corn, soybean, and doesn't have feeder pigs, it's then just lean hogs, it's kind of like the dairy. And then LRP, again, like I said, that, that's more of just protecting against a price decline. It's basically, it's allowing you to buy a put on your cattle for the specific number of pounds that you've got, as opposed to having to go to the futures market and buy a contract that's lumpy. All right, well, that's my contact information if anybody... Um, wants to get a hold of me, but just give me a call there.